Okay, I'm going to be looking at question two from the 2018, um, May 2018 uh, AS physics paper AQA. Uh, so without further ado, let's get straight into it. Question two, skipping over the particles, which I hate. Um, so we've got, uh, figure one shows a truck moving freely down a ramp um, at an angle, uh, inclined at an angle to the horizontal. The truck starts from rest at the top of the ramp and reaches point A. Friction and air resistance are negligible. This is an important point. They're telling us uh, no energy will be lost. Uh, as the truck moves down the ramp, its center of mass has a total vertical displacement of 8 meters. Okay, Calculate the speed of the truck at point A. Okay, So I think this question is trying to lead you into thinking about energy considerations. Uh, because they're telling you the total vertical displacement. They don't tell you how far it has gone this way. They don't tell you the component of gravity that is accelerating the truck uh, down the ramp because obviously any object on an inclined plane, it's not going to be pulled down. At the uh, Vertically pulling directly down is mass times gravity time, uh, mass times gravity, mg. But you can think of it as being broken up into two components and the component that pulls di down the plane, let me just do that in a different colour, this is going to be the acceleration acting down the plane. Uh, we don't have any of that information. We don't know the angle, so we couldn't calculate it anyway. right? So um, we have to think about energy considerations in order to be able to work this out. So whatever GPE the truck has at this point here, it's going to have KE here. So the GPE will be converted into kinetic energy. right? So I can make a statement that GPE will equal kinetic energy and GPE is given by mass times gravity times height. Kinetic energy is given by half mass times velocity squared, and that's the mass of the truck. Now, I'm not given the mass of the truck, but the good thing is I can cancel mass from both sides of the formula as it's the same. Um, I'm asked for the speed, so speed is just the magnitude of the velocity, so that's fine, I can work out the magnitude of the velocity. Um, so to get V on its own, multiply by half, so multiply both sides by two. Two GH equals V squared. So V will be equal to root 2G H, 2G H, right, will equal V. So I have to work that out now. So I have to do 2 times, uh, look on the equation sheet the uh, for gravity, and that's 9.81 meters per second squared, multiplied by the vertical height lost, which will be 8. And we get, uh, let's have a little look. So it is 2 times 9.81 times uh, 8. Number. Right, root answer. So I get 12.5 uh, 2 meters per second. So um, I'm giving this to two significant figures. It makes sense to give this to two, sig two significant figures. So I'll round it to 13 meters per second. Okay, now that method works. Okay, now it's possible to get the right answer via a different method, but the mark scheme uh, doesn't award it. Um, and you could have used to get the right answer. Sorry, you could have used to get the right answer one of these. In fact, you could have used um, this one here: b squared equals u squared plus two as. I'm just gonna have a quick look at that because it is interesting, and it helps to understand why you wouldn't get the mark for it. So the formula is v squared equals u squared plus 2as and this is where u is the initial velocity, v is the final velocity, a is acceleration, s etc. Right? Now as I mentioned earlier if you looked at this thing on an inclined plane then you would have you would know that 9.81 acceleration would be directly down or you could work out the force, mass times gravity. You could also get the component of um, the acceleration that's acting down the plane, this this component here. right? Now, we don't have any, any information to be able to work that out. right? So um, we can't truthfully use this. But it just so happens that if we use this uh, with some wrong assumptions, we can still get the right answer. So um, if I wanted to find the final velocity of this object, its initial velocity is zero, I'm just doing v squared equals, well u gets ignored because we don't have a u, equals 2as. So it would be v equals root 2as. Does that look familiar? Yeah, it's 
well, it's the same as that, right? If you use 2 times 9.81 times S. Now, it just so happens that it gives you the same answer, but because your assumptions are wrong, because actually you don't know the acceleration, you are treating the situation as though the ball falls directly downwards and you know the acceleration is 9.81. So it seems like a pedantic point, but um, uh, I think it's a fair point from the examiners. You should be doing this in terms of energy, not in terms of the Suvat equations. Right, let's look at the next bit. Okay, so figure two shows a truck moving down a ramp with a varying slope. The truck starts from rest and moves freely down the ramp. It reaches point C and then moves along the horizontal runway to D. Friction and air resistance are negligible. Okay, so we can ignore friction and air resistance in our answer. Discuss how the acceleration of the truck in figure two differs from the acceleration of the truck in figure one. Right. So if we just go back to figure one a second. Right, so it's a truck on an inclined plane. So basically figure one is simply this. Is the truck is on a inclined plane that doesn't vary in its gradient. Right. So if mg is acting directly down, right, the component of the force that is pulling the truck down the slope will be this arrow. And the arrow will stay constant in size. So this truck's acceleration will be uniform, right? If we saw this on a velocity time graph, right, you'd expect its, its uh, gradient to be constant. The gradient of a velocity time graph is acceleration. So this thing's acceleration would be constant, right? Would the gradient be 9.81? No, it wouldn't be 9.81. It would be whatever that component would be. This arrow size would be 9.81 and this arrow size would be smaller, right? So in figure one, the acceleration would remain constant. Okay, due to a constant component of acceleration, due to the uniform gradient of the slope, okay? So maybe you've gone a bit overboard explaining that, but it gets the point across. Now, what would happen on this one, right? So essentially, you could think of this as being made up of various different sections, okay? So in section, let's say, oh, they've used letters, so let's use different letters, sorry, X, Y, and then we've got C, D, okay? So at point X, it's like the truck is on a very steep slope, okay? So if the truck's on a very steep slope, if you tried to think about the components acting on it, right, so let me just do this a bit bigger, right, you've got this truck here, or this, I'm using, you know, simplified diagrams, um, pulling straight down, okay, and draw one like this, okay, so this component acting down the hill here at point X, right, so this is the scenario X, is very large. Right, and when we get to point Y, the slope has got less steep, so it's like a scenario more like this. Okay, scenario more like this. So if we look at the components again, mg sorry, mg would be directly down. Okay, and then we've got one at 90 degrees, and so this component is going to get smaller. So we've gone from large to small, and when we get to CD. Right, it's going to be on the flat. There'll be no horizontal component. Sorry, there'll be no um, horizontal component. There won't be anything pulling it this way. So there'll be no acceleration whatsoever. Right. So that's what I want to get across. I want to say that basically, as you go from as you go from x to y, when you go from x to y, you're going from a large um, acceleration to a smaller acceleration. And then when you get to CD, there will be no acceleration. Velocity will be uniform. So um, I will say initially the acceleration is large. Chen is large due to a um, steep gradient. Therefore, a large, uh, larger component of gravity pulling you down the hill. down the slope. Uh, right, as the 
gradient gets less steep. This component gets smaller. As does the acceleration. Right, so the acceleration gets smaller. Gosh, I'm running out of space. Uh, so, um, finally, finally, at point CD, point C to D, uh, no acceleration. Right, uniform speed. Or uniform velocity. Velocity. Really, I shouldn't be mentioning velocity at all because the question specifically says talk about acceleration, right? Um, but I've tried to explain the uh, principles behind the question as well and hopefully uh, give you a bit more uh, understanding. Okay. Right. Final bits. Right. The total vertical displacement of the centre of mass of the truck is also 8 metres. The speed of the truck when it reaches the horizontal runway is the same as the speed of the truck in figure 1 when it reaches point A. Okay, so what the hell are they saying? They are saying that... Sorry, what do they actually say? They say the speeds are the same. So they say basically that when truck uh, 1 in figure 1 gets to point A, its speed here and this thing's speed here are the same. Right? Why is that? Um, and the reason is, is because there is no friction, right? There's no friction or air resistance. Uh, let's not start with because. Right. Go on this side if you want to stand somewhere, right? Um, so, um, as there is no friction, friction, um, all the available GPE, I'm abbreviating, but all the available GPE will be converted into kinetic energy, into key, full stop. They are, since they both start the same height, are identical, sorry, identical, and have the same GPE, the same height, the same, have the same height. They start and end with the same GPE and kinetic energy, K. Okay. okay? Right. I think this is the last bit, yes? Right, so last bit of the question, 2.4. The horizontal runway in in figure two has negligible, negligible friction and air resistance. As the truck moves along the runway, it starts to rain. The rain falls vertically and the water collects into the truck. Discuss whether there are any changes in the momentum of the truck and uh, collected water. Right. So this is in figure two, okay. So we're imagining the truck coming down a slope like this. Okay. And we've got, um, rain falling vertically. Rain is coming this way. Okay. Right, so the truck is moving this way. Right. Discuss whether any changes in the momentum of the truck and the collected water. Okay. So, you can think that the water has a momentum. Okay. Maybe the water's reached terminal velocity, I don't know, very likely. So, the water will have a velocity and a mass. And when you multiply mass times velocity or velocity times mass, you're getting momentum, okay? So, but momentum is a vector quantity, right? You're multiplying by a vector, so momentum is a vector quantity as well, okay? So, um, the water's momentum will be whatever it is down, okay? When it gets into the truck, it's going to be moving this way, right? Or in line with the uh, slope, right? So, the, the water's momentum will change, right? Now, you can kind of consider this to be like a collision between two objects, right? Because uh, the truck is moving along on its merry way, right? And then suddenly, let's say it was doing 10 meters per second, right? Suddenly, uh, a little bit later on, you drop another chunk of mass into it, okay? Now, the truck's momentum, whatever that value was, let's just say the truck had a mass of 1, so it would be like, uh, its momentum would be, what well, it's uh, doing, that's kg, so its mass would be 1, its velocity would be 10, so its momentum would be 10 kilogram meters per second. Sorry, kilogram meters per second. Kilogram meters per second, right? That's what its momentum would be. <clears throat> now, when this slab lands on it and also starts to move along, suddenly we've got 2 kilograms, well, if the slab's the same mass, we've got 2 kilograms. Nothing's been put into the system to speed up this other mass, right, apart from the initial um, momentum of this. So this is like a collision, right? It's as though uh, the truck collided with another 
stationary truck. Meanwhile in Russia, and then they both, both moved off. And you'd expect this thing to slow down, right? But for the momentum to be conserved. How much would I expect these two to slow down by? What would the new velocity be if I worked this out? Well, I'd say momentum before equals momentum after, before, after. The momentum before was just 10, as we've just worked out. The momentum after, I think, is going to be the same, but the mass now is, is going to be different. So the 10 will be equal to 2 times the new velocity, so obviously the new velocity will be equal to 5. So <clears throat> that would be an example of the kind of thinking you would need to do to be able to answer this question well. So what am I going to say? I'm going to say that the momentum of the rain changes as it changes direction. Right? Uh, to move with the truck. Um, so that's covered the rain, and hopefully that's one of the marks, right? I'm also going to say that the truck's momentum remains constant. As its mass increases due to the rain. Right, so the truck's momentum remains constant due to the rain. Sorry, uh, as its mass increases due to the rain. Um, really, for the arguments I've made here. Um, however, its velocity would decrease. Okay. Okay, so hopefully this would be enough to get all the marks on this paper. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.